I'm Dr. David Pena, and in this video, we're finally going to get your dog to stop nipping at you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen my how to potty train your cattle dog, check out this link up top here. If you haven't seen my intro to Australian cattle dog, click down in the description below or the comment section, I'll have it linked down there. And also later on in the video, I'll set a link to the intro video on up top, you'll see it pop up. Um, anyway, so if you've got your cattle dog potty trained and uh, the dog's going outside, your next problem probably is that you're probably gonna have a dog that nips at you, especially if you have a herding dog of some kind, like an Australian cattle dog. Probably gonna nip at your heels, nip at your fingers, nip at anything that moves when you're walking. Um, they have this tendency to wanna bite like your ankles. That's their natural behavior. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with that. They're bred to do that, um, except for in a scenario where you're in the city or you're around a lot of people, those nips, are all potential, all those nips can result in potentially a lawsuit or someone claiming that something happened. Uh, so you wanna limit all of those behaviors as um, strongly as possible for the safety of the dog and for your pop pocketbook, for your insurance. Um, for a lot of reasons, you want to limit the biting behaviors. In fact, there's probably a bunch of behaviors you can think of right now. If you don't even have a cattle dog puppy, if you just have a dog, uh, you could probably list, and you should probably do this, list the five behaviors, five behaviors that you want to eliminate. And every three months, I want you to do this technique that I'm about to show you. Um, but before I show you that technique, I'm gonna show you common strategies that people use to try to inhibit behaviors that they don't like. This is cream soda, it's not beer. It's like cheap cream soda, Kroger. We don't sponsor this channel, but they should. Uh, anyway, uh, so there are five, <laughs> There are a couple things that I've seen online of uh, techniques that dog trainers use, techniques that dog trainers use to keep animals from doing things they don't like. Maybe the most popular of these techniques are the sort of distraction and reward techniques where you get your dog and in order to keep your dog from doing something that you don't want it to do, uh, before it happens, you try to keep c contain their attention and then hopefully they won't do it. Um, this is an interesting technique. It doesn't involve any sort of inhibition per se, but more so reward of another behavior. And if you think about how this might work for favoring one pathway over some other pathway, you might think that that could be acceptable and probably over time, one pathway, if it's heavily rewarded, went out over another pathway. But the problem is that that other pathway isn't necessarily impaired, it's just less likely. Um, so the net effect is that you might end up with 80% this, but still 20% this. And for a lot of behaviors, even, for a lot of behaviors, this is okay. But for some behaviors, you really just need them to go away nearly completely. And the sooner they go away, the better. The better for the dog, the better for you, the better for people in the environment. Um, nipping is one of these behaviors. So my dog, uh, recently Marie, has developed this weird behavior where if I look up and I jump at something, like I try to like knock something down off the ceiling, um, she gets all frazzled about this. She doesn't like it or she thinks it's fun. One of those two things, because her tail wags and she gets upset, she jumps, she barks at me, sometimes she bites me and uh, I need this to stop. I don't like it, and it's not a productive behavior, and it's generally not something I want her to do, because I can think of several scenarios with kids potentially playing that she might do something like this, and they might get scared, and this might escalate or snowball into something that I, I'm not comfortable with. Um, so I need this behavior to stop, and I need it to stop now. So the first thing that we tried, um, and you'll see here uh, my girlfriend Alyssa, she's. She's got some treats for Marie. 
and I'm gonna go into the into this into the kitchen. And when I go into the kitchen, she's going to try to keep Marie's attention with those treats and then keep her from doing it. Watch what happens. Not very effective. Not very effective. And really, did you really think it was gonna work? Did you really? Did you really think that that would work? No. Uh, these Australian cattle dogs aren't dumb, and n n most predators aren't. When it, just think about that for a second. Think about the idea that you could sort of keep a wild dog from chasing a bunny rabbit by like confusing it somehow. This is a strange behavior for a predator. They need, to, they need to have focus. They need to be able to exclude distractions in order to focus on targeting an animal or doing a specific behavior to get the things that they want. Okay, so next strategy. So the next thing people do is they give no's. The idea is that you're trying to perform a kind of inhibitory avoidance. Inhibitory avoidance is using a negative consequence to allow the animal to understand that doing something results in uh, something that they don't like. And so they learn to avoid doing that thing. And in this way, you inhibit a specific behavior. It's a very strong method of keeping a dog very quickly from doing something you don't like. And most people, when they do this, they use no. And, and you'll see here, um, Alyssa's gonna no. try that specific uh, Wait, behavior. Sit, stay. So here's the thing about no's, and um, not that no's are bad, and you should definitely, I, I believe, you should definitely be giving your dog a negative signal to in, impair specific behaviors, even if it sort of results in less drive to do things over time. Having a weak or even a strong no um, as part of your repertoire in order, in, to train the animal is a very effective tool at multiplying your speed at which the dog can learn something. Because the dog, dogs will uh, pick up specific behaviors um, over time with just positive reinforcement, but honing down behaviors quickly requires excluding other behaviors. And so having nose or having the dog understand that certain behaviors are behaviors that they shouldn't be doing or they shouldn't do is an effective tool at weeding out behaviors that you don't like in order to hone down on one that you do want. So uh, we use nose often and Marie's kind of learned to kind of measure how serious we are about the nose and if she really wants to do something she still does it. And this is probably in my estimation where 90% of you guys are at. Timing is very important. It's very important to time your no just after, just after, just after the moment that they begin their behavior so that they understand that that beginning of that behavior resulted in a consequence they didn't like. A lot of people, and I'm not going to include these, but a lot of people use um, like physical, like corrective leashes and stuff where they basically simulate a bite. Uh, I don't think that that's necessary, but if that's what you want to do, I understand the need to do something like that. So I swear there's a reason for this. It's the best in the business. Okay. So finally, the method that we've come across that works the best, uh, I find that this is equally as effective and you don't have to hurt your dog. And also, um, you don't want to do this often because you don't want your dog to become habituated to this correction. So you get a, get a can. It's completely empty. 
okay? And you fill this sucker up with um, pennies. Maybe like 10 of them. So it does that. That's what you want. Cover the top. And you got something that looks like this. Now, um, don't, don't shake this, ever. Uh, don't let them hear you shake this. Don't let your dog hear this outside of the context of you um, giving it a correction. So now in this correction, uh, Alyssa is going to give a shake at the dog. She's not gonna say anything. And you'll see Marie, you'll see how Marie's behavior changes. So after we gave that correction, Marie was pretty upset uh, and she actually went straight to her kennel um, because she she sort of began to associate her kennel with a safe place and also um, where she goes a lot of times when she gets in trouble. Uh, she's never liked the kennel. There was no way we were going to make it a positive place. She really wants to be around us. Anyway, so she went to her kennel. Uh, soon thereafter, uh, we wanted to make sure that we reinforced the specific behavior, we reinforced the specific behavior that we didn't like and not just generally maybe the hall or anything like that. So we had Marie come back and we did a couple jumps and she, 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 she barked one time and then we corrected her gently. We didn't use the can anymore, we corrected her gently. And then after that, uh, we did it several more times. And when she didn't bark, we positively reinforced her calm behavior in the hallway. This is the technique that we use to keep her from nipping at our heels and from giving us any major bites. We, like, I, I don't want to use this all the time. It is um, very emotionally taxing on Marie and it does take its toll if you did this more than once or twice in a given day and or even in a month. Uh, you should do this very rarely and only for, only for behaviors that you are very upset about or really need, really absolutely need to get to stop happening. Okay guys, so hopefully you follow my, follow my advice. Don't overuse the can technique. It will work. I've seen it work on several different dogs. Um, I'm positive if you use this technique, you'll be able to get your dog very quickly to stop doing things you don't like. It's an amazing technique. Okay guys, if you found this video helpful and you really like my content, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It really goes a long way. If you have any questions or comments, um, if this has helped you, or if you've seen this before, leave a comment below. Um, I'd, love, I'd love to hear from you. I actually really like reading your, your comments. Take it easy. Goodbye.